All right, so another kind of periodic motion that we can look at and we need to be able to think about is a spring mass system. So first down here, we just have a cart with a little bit extra mass. This is about 500 grams. It's attached to some springs and right now it's in equilibrium. We have one spring pulling to the right, one spring pulling to the left, and because it's at rest, we know the spring is pulling with the same size force. So this is its equilibrium position. If we move this thing away from its initial equilibrium position, this spring stretches more, so it's not going to pull with more force to the left. This one is stretched less, so it's going to pull with less force. So the sum of the forces on this car is pointed that way. And if I let it go, it's going to like speed up in that direction. But as soon as that car moves to the other side of the equilibrium position, now this spring is pulling with more force. So it's going to slow it down and then speed it back up in the other direction. And we can see that this thing basically oscillates and moves in a periodic way about its equilibrium position. Let's look at that again. So I'm going to put my finger where the middle of the car is. And I'm going to displace it away from there. And we can see how the middle of the car kind of like moves or oscillates about that equilibrium position. So this is a, we'll call it a horizontal spring mass system. Well, we could also have a vertical spring mass system, right? We've seen these kind of things. We've got a spring. Spring constant is 25 newtons per meter. And if I hang 500 grams, gravity pulls down on this with five newtons of force approximately. And if I like slowly, slowly lower this, this spring will pull with more and more force until it's stretched far enough so the tension in this spring is pulling up with five newtons to balance out the five newtons of gravity pulling down. So this is kind of in its equilibrium position, this mass. And if I pull this down farther than its equilibrium position, now the spring is going to pull up with more force than gravity, and so it's going to accelerate upward. Right? Once it gets past its initial equilibrium position, though, the tension above equilibrium is smaller than gravity pulling down. So gravity slows it down and speeds it back up. Slows it down, speeds it back up. So this thing will oscillate about its equilibrium position, just like this one oscillates about its equilibrium position. Okay, so we have two more things that behave in a periodic way. And in each system, we could ask the question, how much time does it take for this thing to go through one period, one cycle of its motion? Or this one, like how much time does it take to go, well, say, from the lowest spot, like here to there? What is its period of oscillation? So just like with a pendulum, let's go through a few little simple experiments to find out like what actually affects the period of a spring mass system uh, and what doesn't. So what can we possibly change about this setup? Well, we could change the spring that we use. This is 25 newtons per meter. This one would be 50 newtons per meter. We could also change the mass that's hanging. We're oscillating up and down. So we've got 500 grams, and just like our pendulum experiments, we've got 1,000 grams, or one kilogram right here. Um, and just like we could like pull the pendulum back a little bit and let it go, or pull it back more and let it go, we could take this and we could like displace it a little, a little bit and let it go. Or if we start from equilibrium again, we could pull it back down farther from equilibrium and let it go. And notice it's got like, it goes farther above equilibrium, just like it started farther below equilibrium. So the question is, what if any of those three things affects the period of the pendulum? So let's take the first one. Um, let's compare spring constants. And so I have two 500 gram masses hanging from a spring that is a spring constant of 50 newtons per meter to one of 25 newtons per meter. So this is double the spring constant of the red one. So I'm going to pull them down the same amount, initially displace them about a few centimeters and let go. Okay. We should be able to see that the green spring has a smaller period than the red spring or the, the green spring mass system is a smaller period than the red spring mass system. So what does that tell us? That tells us when the spring constant or K increases, the period of that system decreases. It's kind of like an inverse relationship. Okay? So apparently the spring constant matters. So let's find out, well, does mass matter? Does it affect the period of our spring mass system? So if we want to find out the effect of mass, Let's make sure the spring constant is the same. So another red spring with a spring constant of 25 newtons per meter. It's going to take, this thing has to stretch more to be able to support that uh, 10 newtons of force. Let me move this thing up a little bit so we don't run into the, the table. 
So I'm going to displace these the same amount, same spring constant, uh, same initial displacement, but we're going to have different masses. So how does the mass, increasing the mass, affect the period? Move down the same, let go. Okay. This is moving slower. It's taking longer to go through one complete cycle than this one is. So apparently increasing the mass also increases the period of oscillation. Okay, so spring constant matters and mass matters. Okay. Let's find out um, how the initial amount of displacement matters. So I'm going to pull this one on the left down a little bit and this one on the right down more, and let's find out how it affects the period of oscillation. So this one down a little bit, this one down more, and release. Okay, try it again. From equilibrium, a little bit, and more. It should be clear to see that it's taking the same amount of time for them to travel through one complete cycle. Even though this one moves slower and has to travel less distance, this one travels more distance to get up and go back down, but apparently this one has a larger initial acceleration to travel that distance in the, in the same amount of time so that they end up going from bottom to top back to the bottom in the same amount of time. And like, why would that make sense? Why if I pull this one down more, why would this one feel a larger acceleration? Well, it's because it must feel a larger net force. Why would it feel a larger net force? Well, this spring is stretched more, so therefore there should be more tension in this spring, giving the net, for giving the net force larger, causing a larger acceleration, um, which basically equals out, so it takes the same amount of time for them to go up and come back down again for one complete cycle of oscillation. Okay? So, Apparently there's only two things that affect the period of a spring mass system. It's the spring constant, it's the mass, and the mass. And it, the initial displacement doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's true for a vertical spring mass system.